Hi, I'm Dr. Rick Kelly, a practicing physician with over 30 years of experience in all facets of primary care. The number of people with type 2 diabetes is increasing at a catastrophic rate globally. Yet many people with diabetes and their doctors are unaware of many factors that affect the long-term health of people with diabetes. In this video, I'll share some things with you about type 2, also known as adult onset diabetes, that you probably don't know and maybe your doctor doesn't know. I'm not going to go in depth about diagnosis and treatment options or the traditional information you get everywhere else about diabetes, but some things that may surprise you. Please note, I'm discussing type 2 diabetes, not juvenile onset or type 1 diabetes. Some things may apply but many don't. Number one, if you have been diagnosed with metabolic syndrome, then you have insulin resistance and are pre-diabetic. Number two, type two diabetes is not only a problem of high blood glucose, but high insulin levels and insulin resistance. For thousands of years in the Middle East, India, China, Diabetes has been recognized as the presence of glucose in a person's urine. Many thought that the kidneys were producing this glucose. But then in the 19th century, elevated blood glucose was discovered, and it was then understood that hyperglycemia, or elevated glucose, was the cause of glycosuria, which is sugar in the urine. After the pancreas, then insulin was found to play a role in glucose metabolism. So throughout the 20th century, and even in the 21st century, many people still focus on blood glucose as the problem in type 2 diabetes, ignoring the fact that hyperinsulinemia, or elevated blood insulin, and insulin resistance are really the major problem. Insulin levels will be chronically elevated even before blood sugar and A1C begin to climb to the diabetic range. Although diabetes is still defined based on blood glucose levels, the real problem, as I said, is insulin resistance, and this precedes the rising blood glucose by years. Number four, high insulin levels in type two diabetes, as well as high glucose levels, cause damage. Number five, elevated insulin levels increase the risk of type two diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and hypertension. That's why metabolic syndrome, which is the constellation of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, gout, high blood sugar, obesity, is so serious because it affects so many things. Number six, people with diabetes should not drink fruit juices as part of their regular diet. If you must have fruit, eat the whole fresh fruit. Fruit juice is mostly sugar water. People with normal weight and normal insulin levels won't likely be harmed by eating a lot of fruit and drinking fruit juices, but for people with diabetes, consuming fruit and fruit juices in large quantities is asking for trouble. The three worst juices, in my opinion, are grape juice, apple juice, and orange juice. Number seven, trying to control your diabetes with medication leads to progression of their diabetes in the long run. You can go the so-called easy route and just take a pill or a shot and suffer the consequences in the long run. Or you can choose the hard way and drastically eliminate carbs from your diet, exercise, lose weight, reverse your insulin resistance, and diabetes before it's too late. Number eight, blurred vision and vaginal yeast infections are symptoms of diabetes and often sugar greater than 300. I've seen it time and time again in my practice, if I see a woman with a yeast infection who hasn't recently been on antibiotics, I check her for diabetes. Number nine, loss of 30 to 40 pounds will often reverse insulin resistance and normalize your blood sugar. It's true. Of course, after that, continuing carb restrictions and lifestyle changes are extremely important. Elevated insulin levels cause weight gain and obesity. The standard of care is to start even people just diagnosed with type 2 diabetes on insulin if their blood glucose is over a certain level. If it can be done safely, I try to avoid insulin in favor of carb restriction, hydration, fasting, exercise, because I know the insulin will make them gain weight. 
Number 11, elevated insulin levels are toxic to endothelial cells that line arteries, leading to atherosclerotic plaques. Atherosclerotic plaques lead to heart attacks. Number 12, elevated insulin levels inhibit lipolysis, breaking down fats so that they can be burned. This is another reason why high insulin levels, whether it's the insulin your body produces or insulin given in a shot, are not good. It puts you in fat storage mode. In order to lose weight, you have to get your insulin level down. Losing fat leads to improvement in glucose control. Insulin stimulates lipogenesis, which is the creation of fat. Regular coffee consumption decreases the risk of diabetes and insulin resistance. I used to add creamer or cream, like a lot of folks, but now I drink it black. It's an acquired taste. Number 16, fat doesn't make you fat, sugar makes you fat. You can lose weight on many types of diet, vegan, low fat, paleo, low carb, low calorie, fasting. For people with diabetes, keto low carb is the quickest and has the greatest benefit for your insulin. Someone said, just eat anything besides the standard American diet and your sugar will be better. I know that's a bit of a hyperbole, but you get the idea. Neuropathy from diabetes often does not go away when you get your sugar and A1C in control. Bad news, once the damage is done, you may not be able to reverse it. Don't let it get to that point. Number 19, autophagy is a housekeeping function in cells that removes misshapen and damaged cellular structures. An elevated insulin level inhibits this and results in increased cellular aging and death. Autophagy is a big topic when it comes to fasting and some people only associate it with fasting but it's an important cellular activity and high insulin level interferes with it. Type 2 diabetes could be more appropriately named chronic carbohydrate overdose. Number 21. Elevated insulin levels increase the risk of breast and prostatic cancer. Yep, and regular BPH too. Still think it's just a sugar problem? Insulin resistance is the most common medical illness globally and it's curable by diet, weight loss, and exercise. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and click like. Which one of these facts surprised you the most? Leave a comment below.